All right, so we're looking at transferring our image uh, from a sketch or a drawing that we have onto, in this case, the litho plate. We also uh, follow these procedures on a stone as well. So first, if you care about your drawing being reversed, uh, which remember in, in lithography, whatever we print is gonna print backwards from what we see on the stone. So I'm taking my original drawing here over to the light table and I'm tracing it on the back side of the newsprint, which I have sketched the image out on. This will ensure that when I transfer the image over to the plate or the stone, that the image when it prints is gonna print the way that I originally drew it and the way I originally intended it. Uh, I'm not, in this case, drawing out all the shading or values or anything like that. I'm really just kind of tracing out what the key lines are for the image. So I just have like my basic guidelines and then I'm gonna deal with all the shading and the value issues once I'm actually on the stone. So you can see the reversal and what the image originally looked like. So now I'm gonna determine the border sizes for my, for my image, which I probably should have already done when planning out my sketch. So you can see kind of like the common paper sizes that we use. So uh, the sheet of printmaking paper is 22 by 30. So I wanna work in sizes that you saw, the seven and a half by 11, 11 by 15, 15 by 22, or the full size of the 22 by 30. Um, that makes really efficient use of our, our paper, which is expensive paper. Um, so it's either a half sheet, a quarter sheet, or an eighth of a sheet. So in this case, I'm choosing the 15 by 22, so I'm working with a half sheet. Your uh, paper needs to be able to fit fully onto the plate. So I need, I don't want any of my edges hanging over because when it runs through the press, it's gonna be a bit of a, a mess. You'll get the indentation from the, the pressure that's put down. You might get scumming on those edges. So I wanna make sure that my paper fits fully onto the plate here. So, and I also need to consider where it lies on the plate. So here I'm looking at the 15 by 22 versus my image size. I've mapped out that I have two inches on all the edges and three inches at the bottom. I usually leave the extra bit, extra weight at the bottom because it, it kind of grounds the image. So I'm making sure here that the image is now completely centered on the plate so it's not set to one side so that I see that my paper is going to fit fully on the plate and leave some room for my registration marks which will be coming later. I'm using red iron oxide paper here to transfer the image. Uh, so first I need to take down my, my sketch and the red iron oxide is essentially rust. It's iron rust that uh, has no grease content to it so it's not gonna affect uh, the surface of the plate or accept any of this. So I'm gonna put that face down in between and then I need to trace out my borders and all my image uh, details or lines, like yeah, guidelines onto the plate. You're always welcome to just freehand your drawing onto the plate with your litho pencil, but most people like to uh, to have some sort of guidelines that they're working with. And you still need to consider where the image edges are and all that. So here you can see, I'm just tracing back over all those elements of ballpoint pen works really well here to put down enough pressure to transfer over that red iron oxide. Um, and I've taped this down so that at any point in time, I can flip this back and look underneath and make sure that everything is transferring that I want to transfer. So can see the results you can see the edges of there and the stuff that I've traced over so far I am tracing here with the same color ballpoint pen that I used to do the the original drawing uh, it is helpful if you use like a different colored pen like let's say a green pen or a red pen so you can see exactly what you've already traced back over um, but we can always flip the the drawing back look under the red iron oxide and see what I've missed and then add in all those little bits that I've just done there. 
So once I've got all that transferred, uh, I want to desensitize the areas that are never gonna get any drawing. So I'm using the border gum, which is a mix of old etches that we've used. Uh, so it's gum Arabic with unknown contents of acid. So I'm gonna stir that around. This is the second I put gum Arabic on those areas, it's gonna make it so that they no longer want to accept grease. So you wanna be careful that you don't spill this in any of the image area unless you know that that image area is gonna be white. Uh, so I'm applying this in a really, really thin layer. You do not want a thick layer of this because the moisture in your hands is gonna activate the gum. If you have really thick areas, your paper will stick to it. It's just gonna be a mess. So I'm applying it as thin as I possibly can with a brush. I'm gonna dump the excess gum that I didn't use from the shot glass back into the border gum. I'm gonna rinse that out really well um, because we can continue to use that gum over and over. Same with my brush, it just rinses out really well with water. So what I need to do now is I need this to dry and then what I wanna do is I wanna cover this thing up so that uh, no, no uh, grease or anything gets onto it. But First, you wanna make sure you clean up any gum that might have spilt on your table or workspace with soapy water. Um, the nice part is that the gum is water soluble, so you can get rid of that really easily. So now I'm gonna make sure that the border is dry. I can use a fan or just let it air dry for a bit. Put it out in the sun, whatever your option is. Uh, usually it's a good time to, to clean up your materials. Once I know that this is completely dry, which I can always, some of the areas might look tacky, but if you touch it, uh, you can um, feel that it's not, and then I need to cover that up. 